In this video, I give you a walkthrough of the features of the sampler in Serato DJ. Find out more coming up. Thank you for watching P.TV where you find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. Now let's get into the video. So, when opening Serato DJ, to access the sampler, you're going to go up here to the top left and click the sampler button. Now the sampler middle panel will show up where you get eight slots. So you get eight slots for samples, but on top of that, you get four banks for these samples. So you get up to 32 samples in Serato DJ that get saved every time you open up the program. So samples can range from anything from drum hits to sound effects to even drum loops or even uh, full loops for songs, but we'll get into that later. So let's go over the basic functions of the sampler. In each slot, you get the name of the sample, you get the pitch, so you can actually pitch the sample up and down just like you would a deck in um, internal mode. You have the waveform right here, and notice any cue points that you set in the sample, if you load it to a deck up here, get saved as well. You have the loop button, the play mode button, and there's three modes for playing uh, with the sample. You can either have the normal play mode where it'll just you hit the sample button and it'll play all the way through. Next, you'll have the play hold function where you have to hold down the hot key for the sample to have it play. And then finally, you'll have the sample play and stop function where you can hit the sample button once to make the sample start and then you have to hit it again to stop the sample. To the right of that we have the sync button so if you're on a controller or you're uh, using sync on other decks you can actually sync these samples to whatever's playing on the decks tempo wise so this is where loops come into play so say you, you're playing maybe a house set or a techno set or something like that that's a little bit more minimal and you want to add more layers you can have your loops of percussion sync it to the deck at least tempo wise and it'll run all in sync and you can pitch up and down and the loop will follow whatever's playing on the deck. To the right of that we have the options um, button right here but we'll get into that in a second and then you have your volume slider right here so this controls the volume of the sample just like the volume fader on your DJ mixer or controller. So let's go into the options and open that up. So you'll notice right here to the left of that we have the cue points that you can select from or you can select the start of the sample. So this is where you select where you'd like the sample to start from. So say you have something maybe like uh, I don't know like a scratch sentence where it has multiple sound effects in, at once and you have multiple cue points. If you want the sample to start at a certain cue point you can go ahead and do that. Or if you want it to start at the start, if you want it to, if you want it to begin at the beginning of the sample you can go ahead and select start as well. Usually I like to have a cue point set up just to make sure I don't have any dead silence before the beginning of a sample that I have loaded into the deck, the sampler deck. Next you have the eject button which uh, ejects the sample from the slot just like you have the eject button on the deck. You have the gain knob much like you have the gain knob on the deck. You have a mute button. You have a key lock button just like you do on the deck. Then you have your pitch bend up and down uh, just like you do on the deck as well when you're in internal mode. So say you do have something looping and maybe it runs a little at a time or something like that, you can go ahead and nudge it with these buttons to try to get it back into sync. Now with that, you also get the choice of where do you want these samples to be output from. So you can either select channel 1 or channel 2 or in my case if you're using an interface or mixer that has more channels than that, you have channel 3 and 4. Also if your interface or mixer allows it, you can send it through the auxiliary which would be the auxiliary channel on the, the mixer. Uh, you see this on the Rain 62 or the uh, Pioneer S9 or any other modern uh, Rain SL boxes, not the SL2 of course. And then you have the master as well. When you send it to the master, um, it sends out to whatever, both channels that are active in Serato. So I would say be careful with this, especially um, if you're used to sending it through say the AUX or one other channel. Um, sending it through the master, if you don't adjust your volume levels, it'll come out twice as loud because it'll be coming out of uh, both channels, channel A and channel B. 
Next to that, you have the uh, master volume for the sampler as a whole. So this is where I would say if you switch it to master, don't go on uh, messing with the volume levels here. Mess with the volume knob right here to make sure all your uh, audio is um, at the same level and just make sure that you're not blowing out the speakers. Also, in an emergency situation, you have a master mute button as well. This comes in handy, say it is too loud and you forgot to uh, adjust the volume for the master uh, of the sampler, you can hit the, the mute real quick, adjust your volume and uh, get right back on track. And like I stated before, you get four banks. So each of these banks is another set of eight samples, which is great. Uh, previously in Serato Scratch Live and uh, the earlier version of the Serato DJ, you only got six slots. So they've actually added two more slots uh, to the sampler, which is great, opens it up. And also it maps way better to a lot of the controllers you see, such as the, the Pioneer uh, SP1 or any of the controllers that have uh, eight sample or eight drum pads at the bottom. Uh, maps a lot better than just having six and having empty slots. One other cool feature of uh, the sampler that just got added recently too is this button right here, which actually will shrink down the, um, the sampler so it's still able to be accessed and you can still see what's active, but it just takes up a lot, of, uh, takes up a lot less screen real estate. So I like having this open because usually my setup when I run uh, Scratch Live, or I'm sorry, when I run DJ, I have the sampler open, FX, and I also have my prepare window open. So as you can tell, th these three right here take up a lot of space. And previously, it would take up this much space in uh, Serato Scratch Live and the earlier versions of Serato DJ. So a lot of times I wouldn't even have the sampler open. And this leads to, you know, maybe you forget what bank you have open or what samples you have loaded to which slots being able to have the sampler open but have it minimized and take up this little bit of screen real estate is a killer feature in my opinion um, this makes me like more likely to use you know samples such as like my drops or like any drum samples that i'm drumming in um, i'm i found myself way more um likely to use these these features and i've been using this a lot more often and with a lot more confidence as well also, in this mode, you still get access to all your banks in a single click, as well as the master volume and the mute. So most of the features that you need um, are there. And even if you just need to get to the features that are hidden, just hit that one arrow right there and the other features pop right up and you can just go ahead and hide it. So that's the sampler in Serato DJ. So question of the day, which feature of the sampler are you most interested in using? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And thank you for watching P.TV, where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. See you next time.